Hi, I'm Tom Hakeem, and welcome back to Meet the Candidates. It's the opportunity to get to see, to put the face with the campaign sign and uh, get to learn a little bit about the people that are working hard because they want to represent us. Some already do. Uh, with that said, I'd like to introduce my good friend, Dr. Mike Aiello. Great Thank to you, see Michael, you for again, coming my out. friend. It's good to see you. Likewise, likewise. Uh, before we get started, a lot of obviously you know most people, a lot of people know you in the community, but we have new people and some we who do. don't. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself personally, Mike. Well, um, you know, my greatest success is, isn't my isn't my career. It's not my title. My greatest success in my life thus far is my family. I uh, I've been married 28 years. We raised three beautiful children in Clinton Township. They all attended Chippewa Valley High uh, School system, graduated from Chippewa Valley High School. Proud to say that we have a great school system in Clinton Township. And, and today my kids, because of that, are very successful. My daughter's 25 years old, Christina Maria. My Danco twin boys are 24, Tony and Dino. They all have great successful careers. And, and I hats off to our school system in Clinton Township because of that. Um, so I'm very proud to be part of this community and give back. Um, I've always been in the help, people helping business as a chiropractor, but like I said, my greatest success is not my, my career as a doctor, but as, as a father and a husband. And, and I think, you know, if people want to know who I am, uh, my children, my family is a reflection of who I am. That's the best way to discover who I am. Um, obviously the success, um, and trials that you face as a business owner um, in the township for a long time. Yes. Uh, you've seen a lot come and go. Uh, it's a great township. Great township. Um, some of your some of your involvement before we get into the technicalities. You know, in the I think people should know um, some of your community involvement and and what you've done in the community because I think that's critical as well to, you know, how people see you or plan to make an elected official come forward? Okay, um, I am a, a third term elected official as a precinct delegate. And precinct delegate is the only elected official that is a non-paying position. Uh, in August, I'll be in my fourth term of that. Um, and a lot of people don't realize that precinct delegates are the foundation to the political system. We're the conduit that circulates to the community, educates our constituents, and, and, and we go all the way back up into Lansing with the state conventions and make a lot of decisions for our voters in our districts. So that, that politically, that's that's my where I'm really engaged at heavily. Um, I also, uh, my wife and I started a business by accident. Ironically, it's called Java Java Espresso Bar on Wheels. It's a special event business. And we have given to so many charitable events with our services as donating. And my kids grew up doing that from age seven on, you know, mm -hmm. with Tony Rubino's events and, and, you know, Teresa Toya's event for Friends of Foster Kids and on and on. Sonny Randazzo has a great charitable annual event. We were a part of that. And we've, we've contributed. I, I can't even, I, I don't even try to count how many endless uh, charitable events that we've been involved in and we continue to be involved with. Well, it's a lot of hours, too. That's not just a donation. It is yeah, a, a lot a, of hours. Commitment. It is. And it, it's, you know, you, you want to give back more. But there's only so many hours in a day, and, and plus you still got to try to make a living somewhere and and, and keep the wheel balanced, correct? Yeah, and I'm sure your <laughs> wife appreciates that part of it. Yes. Um, so, the uh, treasurer of Clinton Township is a uh, demanding position. It's it's a difficult position. Um, you at the same time are an active board member in this community. Uh, you have kind of two hats. Um, but as they always say, show me the money. So that, that job is probably one of the more difficult tasks in this community. So first of all, um, why, why go after it? Um, and second of all, once you get there, we've had, we've had great success in that office for all these years with Paul and his predecessors. Um, not to just continue what's going on, but what can we be? What can we be doing, Mike, if you get elected, to enhance it? Well, first off, how I got involved in, in running for the seat was I I ran in 22 for state representative, um, and I was going to continue that path. Um, 
right after I, I we finished that election cycle, I already started working on my next run. Mm -hmm. And ironically, two days before the filing deadline of this year, State Representative Joe Aragona, who is a friend of mine and associate, reached out to me and says, look, at, I'm asking for a deep favor. He goes, I know your heart's in run for state representative. He goes, but I know you're the only candidate that can save and preserve Clinton Township. So I'm asking from the bottom of my heart, from me to Bob Cannon, will you run for this seat to save our, our great township? And I says, no questions asked. I'm going down and filing. So that's what got me involved, because I, I don't plan on moving. I've, I've lived in this this township 26, seven years, something like that. It's a great community. Actually, Clinton Township in Mocomb County, probably demographically, is probably by far the best kept secret. We still today, obviously, signs tell you that we're having 1.5 to $3 million houses being built all over in spotted places throughout Clinton Township. So that tells you how great a community we have. So that's how I got involved. Now, what am I bringing to the table? Um, I have a lot of years of experience as a chiropractor, obviously as a doctor. We constantly got to deal with uh, legal documents. We got to deal with insurance filings. I have a 100% clear record, never been malpracticed, and never had insurance fraud claims filed against me because I'm very detail-oriented. I'm a micromanager. I'm not the guy, like when, I, I, I seen over 120 patients a day on my best days in my practice. That's a lot of patients as a chiropractor. And when I sat down at the end of the day, I didn't have someone stamp all my insurance billings and send them off. I set them ahead on my desk and I hand scoped every one of them and signed them off myself because I'm a micromanager. And as a treasurer, I think that's one of the most important things is you gotta understand how to be organized. You gotta be, uh, you know, very uh, scrutinizing on everything that passes by. And, and micromanaging the dollars is very important because a loose budget is a dangerous budget. There's, um, if you have the purse strings for the township and obviously have to work with the board and the supervisor, et cetera, um, as an individual and a resident of the township, um, what areas do you feel you would identify um, initially and say, wow, here's a couple areas in the township that I, I, I'm not saying have been not neglected, but I'm saying could really, we could show some improvement in? Well, first off, I'd like to say, um, you know, I'm, I'm a firm believer in, you know, being that I will be new in this position. I, I'm not going to turn my back on Paul Gillingham. He's been there a long time. He knows a lot of things. I'm going to lean on Paul very greatly. Right. I think he's done a great job. As far as what I see knocking on doors, I'll tell you a couple of things I'm hearing from the public. The first and number one concern is public safety. Mm -hmm. Public safety is a big one. In fact, I was at a public event the other day, and there's a, a nonprofit organization that um, buys armored gear for K canine dogs, and they have a canine dog that they, they, they got donated that willing to bring into Clinton Township. And I, from my understanding, from what they told me, we do not have the funds right now to bring in another canine officer into Clinton Township. So those are my concerns, because like I says, I'm now at senior citizen age. So safety is even more important. Welcome and to the club. I, you, you know what I'm saying? Plus, when you have, like, young drivers on the road, I mean, I drive, I live off of Malara, Moravian, and, and Metro Parkway sounds like a drag strip. I, it just amazed me. So public safety is the number one ultimate concern. And then our protecting our seniors, citizens. Senior citizens, I think, are the most um, vulnerable part of our community. And, and they make up the larger percentage of our community. So we need to focus on not only protecting them from safety, but other programs like making sure they, they have food, making sure food can get delivered to them. Make sure we have public services like free health checks, things like that. As a doctor, I, I have experience in that, so I'm going to bring those kind of things to the table in our community and, and grow those those areas. There's a um, there's an opportunity um, we have in this um you will also, uh, upon election, there's a great, um, great problem in this country with separation and anger, and um, it, it, it troubles me, it hurts me as a person because I've lived through a lot, and we were joking a few minutes ago about the hippie days, uh, which nowadays nobody <laughs> remembers, I do. I do. Um, but. But there seems to be this division, and it's it's hard to separate it, 
it's hard to separate anger between parties from a national level all the way down to a local level. Um, and the, the lack of communication. So where do you feel you can add to that? Not that our board is bad, our board is human and they're Correct. good. Correct. And uh, our treasurer is good, our supervisor is excellent. Yeah. I mean, these are things that are now beyond even what they grew through from at 1.8 to yes. point B. Yes. So now going forward, um, where do you see all that going? Well, as I, I previously mentioned that I'm going to lean heavy on the Paul, okay? I, it's not about parties, and that's that's where we're, we're mis missing the boat on this. You know, I always tell people there's strength in numbers, and right now our country is so divided. I, I think we're more than divided. I mean, you go down the street, you go to the stores, you hold the door open for somebody, and they get angry at you for holding the door. I mean, that goes to show you how much hate and division we have. And my house is a ha house of diversity. My, We've raised a lot of kids in our house, and they're all from all parts of the world. And, you know, there's good in everybody, you know. And yep. sometimes they just need a little loving. You, you know, I have I, I, I have no problem working with party lines. It's, it's not about parties. It's about our voters taking care of the people in our community. And, and But, see, a lot of politicians don't understand that. You know, I was in a meeting the other day, and a question was asked of me. In fact, it was a, a gentleman that was thinking about and considering uh, donating to my campaign. And his first question to me, uh, uh, you must be a Republican. Well, in my mind, I'm, I'm on the Republican ticket, but I'm, I'm not really a Republican. I'm for everybody. But that's, it, you know what I'm saying? It right there creates a division. So I turned around and said to him, I'm a Republican, but I'm going to tell you exactly how it is. There's strength in numbers, we're divided. I'm for the people. Everybody in my community, I don't care what party you're on, it doesn't matter. I'm here to help everybody. So we need to stop asking that as the first question, what party are you from? Because that right there creates, you know, it's anger, hate. It's a, it's a terrible question. Well, and I agree. It's extremely difficult from the top down where, it is. you know, it's it's happened and it, it exists. The um, um, How do you feel about, and obviously in the role as a treasurer, you have some, but on a board as well, you have like some say. Um, how do, how do you feel about keeping our young people in this community? And, and what do we need to do as far as businesses go to continue, I won't say to start, because we do a great job bringing new business in. Some make it, some don't. That's just the world today. Um, what do you think about, uh, what do we do to, and like you said, my kids as well, Chippewa Valley Schools graduated, they've all been very successful, we're blessed. Um, what are we gonna do to keep people in the community? And what are we gonna do to enhance to make more businesses want to come here. Well, first off, with the with the Generation Z and the up and coming generations, um, we are we are engaging with them properly. We are we are sidebarring them, I believe. Mm -hmm. However, my solution to it, and I, I I live by this. My campaign manager is an eighteen year old young man, mm -hmm. and I I it's a bold statement, you know. I, I, it's not, I, I walk my talk, in other words. I'm all for the young people. Like I said, I have a daughter 25, twins 24. At this point, where this country is at today, they won't have the opportunities that you and I had growing up. And I want to secure those opportunities for these young generation because they're the future of this country. And I realize that. You and I live the majority of our life. Right. And so we have to do something about it. And that's why I'm on the front lines. I'm willing to do whatever I got to do, day in and day out, whether I'm paid or not, and like I says, I'm going to be a fourth-term precinct delegate. It's a it's an elected official position, but it's a non-paying, and it's not about the money. It's about doing the right thing. God put us on here for a purpose, and I'm doing my second term of what God's called me to. I first was a healer, now I'm in the public sector, and that's where I want to continue serving until God decides to take me upstairs. Well, hopefully he'll take you upstairs. <laughs> I think some of us think that you might have a couple detours along the way, but we'll leave that for another show. Because um, I'll be right there with you, you know, trying to get an interview. The, um, the treasurer position, a lot of responsibility. Um, you have a good background, obviously, as a business owner. Um, as a, uh, a doctor, you know that forms and insurance companies um, but it also has the responsibility of helping us manage the money for the township and make sure that we're healthy in that area to do the things that you brought up. 
which is support our, our public servants, et cetera, our police, our firemen. Um, what do you feel that gives you the experience to, not a personal question, but to be able to step into that role as the basic, the, the money manager for the township? Well, like I said, you know, being a healthcare provider, it's obviously, it's a lot of responsibility. Mm -hmm. It's easy to skip a beat and get yourself in hot water. Um, and and I, I kind of compare a treasurer's position similar to that. Obviously, they're two different animals, but they're very delicate situations because you have to micromanage them. And it has to be a day-by-day -day situation. You can't just go once a week, I'm going to you know, go through the books or, or monitor what's going on. This has to be done daily, and it's a, it's a non-going daily, you know, responsibility. Um, I'm also a, a real estate agent, so I have background in real estate, so I understand about property taxes and finances and stuff. So I, I bring a lot to the table, um, I think, for this position. Um, like I said, it's, I'm going to lean on people like Paul, people that have the experience because they're they're really the experts, and I'm just they're just passing it along to me. But I'm going to lean on them heavily. And then again, it's not about the party; it's about taking care of our community, taking care of our constituents. That's who put us in office. So, given the opportunity right now for the next, um, I would say 20 minutes, but we'll do two minutes because I'm watching the clock. Um, Tell the people of Clinton Township why they should make um, Doc Gallo their treasurer. Well, I've been a community leader for over 20 years in this community. I've given back endless amounts of hours, my, me and my family. Um, I'm a, I, I, I'm, I'm, I walk my talk. I mean, if anybody knows me, you want to find out who I am. At meet my family, talk to my neighbors. I mean, they're they're my resume. It's, it's that simple. Um, I, I go along the business, you're asking about the business sector. Um, I, I do go visit businesses because I understand that that small business sector, if we lose our small business sector, Don't you have no community. Commu they make up our community. And the small business sector, they're a little, they're, they're not happy right now for a lot of different reasons. You know, a lot of them are justified complaints, you know, other maybe not. But you know, I, I, I want to really focus on that area because they bring a lot to the table for us. They they help bring the growth, the tax yeah. dollars we need. Well, they built America. That's they what small business America. did. A lot of people forgot that. And we're lucky we have Walmart and Costco yeah. and big places that employ people and pay taxes. But yeah, small business, uh, family businesses are so important. So um, on behalf of myself, uh, everybody here at CTTV and Clinton Township in general, uh, first, I want to thank you for uh, making this effort, because as we spoke earlier, I have all the respect in the world for people that at this juncture, the way the world in America is struggling a little bit, want to get involved. And that's that's a sign, a very strong sign in itself. Um, also, I want to thank you, obviously, for coming out and and wish wish you the best as far as um the election, because that's a lot of work you got ahead of you. And <laughs> so, Dr. Mike Aiello, thank you for thank spending you. a few minutes with thank us. Thank you. I'd like to give one shout out to Bob Cannon. I want to congratulate Bob Cannon on such a great job he's done to this committee for all these years. Thank you, Bob. You are a true leader. I look up to you. God bless you. And thank you for this opportunity. Oh, well, I'd have to agree with most of that. He's my friend, so I'm not going to give any <laughs> testimonial because he might not like it. Well, this edition of Meet the Candidates, giving you the opportunity to meet people like Doc Aiello and the others who want to serve you, uh, is only a process, a step along the way. The actual completion is for you to go out and vote. So make sure you go out and vote. Take, take advantage of the great freedom we have in this country. So... For Meet the Candidates, this is Tom Hakeem.